Good morning and welcome back to the second session. And in this session, we're going to study on uh, first and second Peter. We're going to study on first and second Peter. So we all know the author of this letter. Who's the author of this letter? Yes, of course, it's Apostle Peter. So yeah, I just displayed this image. Uh, he was married, Apostle uh, Peter was married he had his uh, younger brother andrew and he was one among the 12 disciples of jesus he seemed to be a prominent figure or the spokesperson he was a very prominent leader so other than that what do we know about peter class feel free to share so that we keep the session interactive and it would be interesting to us. What do we know about Peter? Anything that you know you have studied in the Gospels, in the four Gospels, we did study about Peter, isn't it? He was a very prominent figure, prominent leader as well. I've just taken all these pictures from the recent chosen series to keep our class interesting and interactive. Well, Peter was the author of this letter, first and second Peter. And this book is also the first Peter is known as the book of suffering and glory. First Peter is also known as the book of suffering and glory the name peter is referenced 210 times 210 times in the new testament more than any other single figure other than jesus christ so peter is referred in the new testament by three different names can anyone guess what are the three different names that peter carried or has anyone from the class can unmute and share one is simon what are was the... called can you hear me yes yes one is simon and the other is cephas which uh, uh, jesus changed and said you are cephas right and then i call you cephas something else is, it, is that it i don't know <laughs> that's what yes. came to mind immediately simon and cephas yeah Thank you. Thank you, Nina. You're right. First was Simon. Simon was the name given by his parents, which means reed. The second, as Nina said, Cephas. Cephas was an Aramic name given to him by Jesus, which means rock or a stone. The third is Peter. Peter is a Greek equivalent of the Aramic name Cephas, again, which means rock, pebble, or a small stone. So Jesus makes a play on his name when he talks about building his church. Building his church. When we Can I request you all to turn to Matthew chapter 16, verse 16 to 18. Matthew, Matthew chapter 16, verse 16 to 18. If you have taken, you all can read. Anyone have taken Matthew 16, 16 to 18? Uh, yes. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16 to 18. Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Good for you, Simon, uh, son of John. Jesus answered Jesus. For this truth did not come to you from any human being, but is given to you directly by my Father in heaven. And so I tell you, Peter, you are a rock. 
and on this rock foundation i will build my church and not even death will ever be able to overcome it amen thank you so you see how jesus in the same verse he addresses him as simon then as peter and then he says you are a rock and upon this rock i will build the church i'll build my church and the gates of hades shall not prevail against it we also see when we read uh, when we read the gospels okay matthew mark luke and john we see that peter was a prominent figure among the disciples let me see if i have okay uh, he was uh, he was a prominent figure among the disciples so can we list out some of the remarkable events of peter that you recollect when we had studied the gospels any of the events that you remember i'm sure all of us know just that you need to unmute and share what you remember the remarkable events of peter uh ma'am um yes one, yes one event i remember is uh, when uh, jesus was washing the disciples feet peter uh, peter began to question as to why jesus was washing the feet and he didn't want jesus to do that and then yes. when jesus and jesus said that it is important that you know i have to wash your feet and he told the reason immediately peter was very uh, uh, immediately peter said that please not only wash my feet but wash my whole body he's always Thank been you, on the, yeah he's always been yes. on the extreme yes. side yes yes thank you uh, another, another thing that he did was he walked on water even if it was a short time because yes. when he kept his eyes fixed on jesus he walked but then when we looked at the winds and the waves of course then he sank so that's one thing which he did which all the others didn't do they all sat in the boat but he said when he said in which can i come and he went and he did that for a short while then of course he was part of the transfiguration wow that's one thing yes. I and mean, he was always yes. called for yeah these three of them were always called for special i mean the lord took them whether it was to raise up even jairus daughter or things like that or a couple of things that kind of in a in a circle that he was part of then of course he denied the lord also not a very good thing but he was known for that yes. also yeah Yes. Thank you, thank you, Nina. There were many instances that you have shared. Thank you so much. Others in the class. Yeah. So no. uh, one thing that um, I would like to share was when um, Jesus reinstituted Peter. So after resurrection, we see that Peter is the one who's calling them to go and uh, go back to the fishing, fishing and that occupation. And when Jesus uh, called them back. and then he's saying uh, about to peter that peter do you love me and he's reinstating peter and then uh, peter we see is asking about john like what lord about this man like he's pointing that like he's not uh, like he's a person like who's so much questioning jesus and even in the as nina was talking about the transfiguration thing like he says like you know let us make a tabernacle here and stay here so he's so much you know he is he just wants to be with the lord but and um, he's so much uh, different from the other disciples like he he keeps on questioning and he wants to know more and i see that in peter yes yes thank you thank you jackin for sharing anyone else who would like to add okay you've made my class easy thank you so much yeah most of the points have been shared by all three yes so to start up with um, let me change the slide okay that's fine is it so he was born in a town of bethsaida on the sea of galilee as per the uh, the gospel john and we also see that he was a son of a man by the name John and he was a fisherman by trade and his brother was named Andrew so uh, the uh, the through the gospels we learn that we learn that Andrew and Peter were both the disciples of John the Baptist and after the advice of John the Baptist they started to follow Jesus 
So, and uh, when they had an encounter with Jesus at the seashore, this is the picture that I've uh, uh, put across here. Let me make it. Okay. So this is the time period where the whole night Peter and Andrew have toiled and fishing. They were not very successful in catching. But then Jesus comes here. Jesus comes and they have an encounter and they are able to catch the fish. Though the whole night they toiled, but now at the very word of Jesus, Peter is able to catch the fish. And then after the catch, Jesus calls, follow me, follow me. We read that in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 19, we see that Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were the fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me, and I will make you the fishers of men. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. Look at the response. Now, what made Peter to follow Jesus? The miracle. Because he knew the whole night he toiled, he did not find any fish. But at the very word of the teacher, the very word of the master, he cast the net, not even in the deep sea. You know, just little further from the shore. But then he, were, he was able to get the fish. That was nothing but a miracle. And here he also recollects the, uh, the word of John the Baptist. The minute G God prepared his heart, the minute Jesus called him, follow me, he left the net and followed Jesus earnestly. Later in the Gospel of Luke, Six, we also see that he was one among the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And, and among all the 12, he considered to be, as Jekin was sharing, that he was uh, very active in nature. He seemed to be the spokesperson among the group, even though occasionally he got them into trouble. And yes, as Nina said, he was one among the three in the inner circle, always Peter, James, and John were present with Jesus in the many instances. And uh, we also see when, uh, when Jesus, as uh, Sean was sharing, when Jesus wanted to wash the feet of all the disciples, of which Peter was not ready to give his feet. But when Jesus explained it, he said, okay, why just the feet? You give me a complete we also see that, um, you know, he always tried to protect Jesus from arresting by the soldiers at the Garden of Gethsemane. And his um, aggressive in nature also made him to take the sword and cut the soldiers' ear, of which Jesus fixed it back. We also see that after the arrest of Jesus during the trial time, how Peter denied Jesus three times. In fact, he was the one who said Jesus that he will not deny him, is ready to give his life. But he seemed to be the first one, as Jesus told him, even before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And that was exactly what Peter did. Also in the Gospel of Luke and John, we see that he was the first disciple to go to the empty tomb of Jesus. And he was also, as Jekin was sharing, after the ascension of Jesus, after Jesus been rise, we read in John chapter 21, verse 15 to 19, we see that he was commissioned by Jesus to take care of the flock by saying, how much do you love me? Three times. And he literally humbles himself, throws himself into the feet of Jesus. And uh, he says, Lord, you know me. It's not that I have to explain it to you, how much I love you, but you know me. And then Jesus, this is what he says, tend my sheep, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. 
and later part in the same in the same chapter 21 john 21 verse 19 he says jesus indicted the manner in which he would die so even his death was already predicted by jesus so peter actually also experienced some of the special miracles some of the special miracles like first even before he could follow jesus he received a miracle of the catch of fish first second catch of fish was after the ascension of jesus again all the disciples along with peter they went back to the same fish trade the whole night they toiled they didn't find a fish and next day in the morning at the command of the man from the shore they they cast their net and they caught the fish and that what made Peter to realize that it was the Son of God who's been ascended. And here, even before the boat could reach the shore, along with the other disciples, Peter jumps out of the boat, he swims first and comes to meet Jesus, saying that you are the true Messiah. And he asks for forgiveness for the act that he did by denying him three times and jesus reaffirming friend of all the other disciples he forgets about the act that he did but then he appoints and he commissions him to be the leader for his sheep. then we also see his mother-in-law was healed by Jesus. Some of the uh, miracles that we see from the Gospels are is that you know he was the only one to walk on the water at the invitation of Jesus, and he also experienced the Mount of Transfiguration along with the other two disciples from the inner circle. And also, he was the one who caught the fish with the coin in its mouth to pay the tax, and Peter let me see just give me a minute let me check that out yeah this was the large fish that was caught in the word of jesus okay this is okay um, yeah, Peter was a key player in the book of acts when we read through the acts it talks about two people okay about Apostle Peter and Apostle Paul. So Peter was a key, key player in the book of Acts and in the life of the early church. Now, how do we know that in the book of Acts chapter one and two, it addresses that how Peter encouraged the rest of the apostles in the process to replace Judas. So he took the leadership. Now Judas is not there. Somebody should replace him so that there are 12 apostles. And he preached the main message on the day of Pentecost. At this very uh, message, 3,000 came into the knowledge of Christ. And we also see that he became a man of many miracles. How? In the book of Acts, it's recorded that he healed a lame man along with Apostle John as he was entering the temple this lame man was lame from the birth this man was lame from the uh, he was crippled from the birth and you know he was expecting arms as peter and john were walking in he was looking at their hands and here peter says i do not have silver or gold but in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk you also see that the shadow falling on people resulted in healing and deliverance. We also see some of the other healing that he healed a man by the name of Inus in Lydda. He also raised Dorcas from the dead in Joppa. We see that in Acts chapter 9 when we read through from verse 33 to 42. We see these two miracles there. He also stood strong in the face of persecution. When we see persecution, he stood strong. In fact, you know, we see that at the end, Peter was crucified upside down. But here, in times of persecution, Christians were persecuted in the in in, in Rome under the Empire Nero. 
And here, Apostle Peter was encouraging the Christian believers or the Jewish Christians and the others who followed Jesus to stand strong at the time of persecution. He pronounced judgment to, uh, on Ananias and Sapphira who fell dead by his very word. He was also imprisoned on several occasions. And, you know, when the... Uh, As he was praying on one day, you know, uh, there was a uh, there was a door that was opened by faith to the Gentiles uh, toward the house of Cornelius, where he received this vision, and God uh, God revealed it to him that you know there will be three people coming to call him and go to their house and proclaim the word and the holy spirit encountered cornelius and his household and this was the first time that peter experienced how god can open a door among the gentiles and later he was also the main spokesperson at the jerusalem council which took place on addressing many issues in those days we also see that he made many trips. In some cases, he traveled with his wife. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 5, where it says, Do we have no right to take along a believing wife, as do also the other apostles, the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? So see, uh, Peter seemed to have traveled on many occasions along with his wife and he uh, when we read through the book of acts we see that he traveled to uh, traveled and ministered at samaria along with john and he ministered in lydda and sharon he also ministered at Joppa, Caesarea, and he visited the church in antioch and he also traveled across asia minor and he ministered there and uh, finally, it says that he spent time in Babylon. Babylon those days is considered to be for Rome. It was a popular code name for Rome among the victims of its oppressions. Yeah. Um, further, we see that uh, the later, the last days, Peter seemed to have lived in Rome and he was crucified upside down by the hands of Nero. Yeah, the audience to whom this letter was addressed to was to the uh, Jewish Christians who were scattered across the Asia Minor and other places. So he was writing this letter and encouraging the Jewish and the Gentile believers to withstand the persecution by keeping uh, by um, encouraging them to be focused on Jesus Christ alone so that they can withstand the persecution what they're going through for the reward is much greater than what they are going through and uh, yeah this is what it is and the occasion of this letter as we know that he was writing this letter to the people and he was writing this letter from rope itself It was uh, approximately the date that this letter was addressed was from 63 to 65 AD. The main message, let's go into the main message of 1 Peter. Uh, yeah, the main message is uh, Peter's guarantee that he is uh, uh, in when we this is from Second Peter. Okay, the first Peter's main message is he is addressing that this letter uh, to the to the people who have been persecuted uh, in different region. Uh, one of the reason how this persecution was birthed was um, you know the the, the emperor Nero. He himself set certain people to uh, set the Rome on fire and he, dest uh, he burnt among the 14 uh, region, 10 he burnt and he, and, he, and he blamed the Christians 
for burning the Rome, for destroying, for getting the Rome destroyed because of the Christians. And what he did is that he resulted in, uh, you know, persecuting the Christians by throwing them, uh, uh, throwing them as a prey to the beast life. And he burned some of the Christians as a live torches in his public garden. And he only uh, increased the intensity of the uh, of the uh, 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 persecution toward the Christians. So Peter gives certain instruction on how to face and handle this persecution. He encouraged the believers, like, do not give up on what you're going through, for your reward is greater. Suffering for righteous is part of the call of the believer you also say suffering uh, is to be patiently endured without retaliating he also says suffering can be a blessing when we read uh, first peter chapter 2 and 3 we see that he is addressing on certain uh, certain issues on suffering and he encourages them because there's no other way for us to run away from this but then he says he is he's encouraging the believers as he's encouraging he's not running away from suffering but then even he is enduring it so he is just uh, sharing it from his own experience. So he's encouraging the other believers, saying that suffering can be a blessing. He is demonstrating from his own life. And he also says that suffering identifies us with Christ because even he suffered on our behalf. And uh, he also says suffering is part of God's will. And that should be the nature of Christianity. And because of all this, we can actually enjoy, rejoice during the suffering. That is something that we see the lifestyle of the apostles. They actually rejoiced during the suffering. We also saw in Peter's um, uh, episodes, like how Peter and Silas were cast into the prison, but instead of you know talking about the um, uh, the the persecution, what they're going through or unfairness, but they rejoiced and praised God because they rejoiced and praised God. God showed up. There was a great earthquake in that prison, and they were released, and the jailer's household was saved through that. And here Peter is encouraging all the other believers to rejoice in suffering. So that may be some of the unique features of this book is um, he was the eyewitness of the suffering of Christ and he was also the eyewitness in the transfiguration. And with that, he also charged the elders to feed the flock. Just like how Jesus uh, asked him to feed the flock, we see uh, Peter uh, uh, raises the leadership and holds the same great model of leadership in his ministry. He raised leaders and, uh, and put the leaders in charge of taking care of the flock. He encouraged the audience to be uh, clothed with humility because that should be the nature of the, uh, of uh, uh, of the Christian uh, believers. And we also see the nature of Peter, just like how Jekin was sharing a few instances of Peter's nature as he was with Jesus. His nature was so very different. He was very aggressive. He was very um, impetuous, quick to judgment, very ambitious. He was a person who was unpredictable. But here, after the death of Jesus, we see Peter as a very different man. There is a remarkable change in him as a leader. As a leader, we see that when we read through the book of Acts and when we read through his epistle, first and second Peter, we see that there is a stability in his leadership. He seemed to be very patient, loving, kind and humble servant of God, these qualities, that which was not present in Peter before, we see those qualities of Christ in him very evidently as a leader. And also he addresses himself in 1 Peter chapter 5, when we read through 1 Peter chapter 5, he's saying, the elders who are among you, I exhort 
I who am a fellow elder. He humbles himself and says, I am like you, a fellow servant of God, fellow elder. Okay. And also when we read in First Peter, I'm just reading on few scriptures and asking the class to read because I want to complete both these letters in this class. Mm. Yeah, First Peter chapter 1, verse 7, we see that um, we're talking about the genuineness of our faith being much more precious than gold that can perish, though it is tested but fi uh, uh, by fire, but may be found to praise, honor, glory at the revelation of Christ. And then also in other scriptures, we see the word called precious been used more than uh, about eight times in both Peter's letter first and second letter he uses this word called precious so he says like a faith more precious than gold and in verse 19 chapter 1 verse 19 again he addresses saying that the precious blood of Jesus Christ again he, he says the precious among the chosen cornerstone and in chapter 3, verse 4, he addresses um, the precious, gentle, and quiet spirit. And in 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 4, he's addressing on the great and precious promises. So with that, we will move on to 2 Peter. Now, 1 Peter, uh, this book is known as the book of suffering and glory and second peter is addressed as the book of true knowledge second peter is addressed as the book of true knowledge i'll just take a few more extra minutes to complete this letter okay 